one thing that you know kind of spooked me about it all what? was um, here's a song called uh, Let's Go Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. 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 And it says, Don't let the elevator bring us down. The latest on the mystery surrounding Prince's death. The U.S. Attorney's Office and DEA are now joining the investigation. Epic Records Chairman and CEO L.A. Reid, he tweeted last night, This is what it sounds like when the world cries. Prince, I already miss you. Wow, your melodies will live on forever. L.A. Reid joins us right now here in the studio. Do you have health problems? Uh, that I don't know, right? What I know is that um, he was really health conscious. He was a vegan. Uh, I feel like the greatest performer that I could have been. And uh, uh, people who love me feel that I was the greatest performer they'd ever seen, so. We all know Prince courageously revealed the underlying realities of Hollywood and its shadowy aspects during one of his interviews while he was alive. Today, we witness the repercussions of the potential troubling actions emanating from within the entertainment industry, among which was the scary situation in Maui. 911 service and cell service has gone down in parts of that island. Officials describe a dire situation as hospitals are overwhelmed with patients suffering burns and smoke injuries. Prince's insights into Hollywood took on a more ominous tone when he tragically passed away in an elevator. The circumstances surrounding Prince's death inside an elevator were particularly eerie, according to L.A. Reid, especially given Prince's known apprehensions about elevators. As depicted in the following video from E.T., Prince's friend Reid discussed the unsettling discovery of Prince's lifeless body in an elevator. One time when I was with him privately, he said, you know what the elevator is, right? No. I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil. According to E.T., Reed shared Prince's aversion to elevators. Prince held a belief that elevators were sinister in nature, often referring to them as instruments of the devil. This perspective on elevators was encapsulated in Prince's 1984 song, Let's Go Crazy. In the song's lyrics, Prince likened elevators to malevolent forces that might attempt to bring a person down. He sang about the struggle to ascend by pressing a higher floor button, symbolizing his defiance against the negative influence he associated with elevators. He sings, and if the elevator tries to bring you down, go crazy, punch a higher floor. If you don't like the world you're living in, take a look around you. At least you got friends. You see, I called my old lady for a friendly word. She picked up the phone, dropped it on the floor. Ah, uh, ah, uh, is all I heard. Are we going to let the elevator bring us down? Oh no, let's go. Reed recounted a conversation he had with Prince regarding the artist's feelings about elevators. This discussion left Reed feeling uncomfortable as it delved into the topic of the devil, something he was uneasy discussing. The news of Prince's lifeless discovery in an elevator on the first floor of Paisley Park, Prince's residence and studio, deeply perturbed Reed, given the context of their previous conversation. One time when I was with him privately, he said, you know what the elevator is, right? I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil. It scared me. I don't like to talk like that, but he said that. So for me, it was like really haunting when I read that he was found in an elevator, which was what triggered the public because they think it might connect to him being outspoken against the industry. Prince undeniably stands as one of the most influential musicians in history, with a remarkable career that extended across more than four decades. His legendary status within the music industry is underscored by the extraordinary achievement of selling over a hundred million records worldwide, a distinction attained by only a select few. Prince's global influence is immeasurable, and although he is primarily celebrated for his music, he also made forays into the realm of film. Prince's versatility as an artist extended beyond his music and encompassed his image, where he attained the status of a S symbol by embracing an androgynous sexuality, challenging traditional gender norms, and breaking free from racial stereotypes. His bands frequently included talented female members, and he consistently championed women within the music industry throughout his illustrious career. However, his dedication to women's empowerment also generated a range of rumors and speculations, ultimately contributing to his growing disillusionment with the industry. Don't be fooled by the internet. Uh, it's, it's cool, it's cool to get on. In the music industry, Prince, who sadly passed away at the age of 57, emerged as a trailblazer and, at times, a contentious champion of artist rights.
Throughout the 1990s, he engaged in open conflicts with the music industry, resorting to protests such as etching the word slave onto his cheek and adopting an unpronounceable glyph as his name. These bold actions were his means of expressing profound dissatisfaction with the major label system. He said, record contracts are just like, I'm going to say the word slavery. I would tell any young artist, don't sign. Furthermore, in a 1996 interview with the Los Angeles Times, Prince conveyed such a deep distaste for the music industry that he disclosed a longing to have pursued an entirely different career. He exclaimed, if I knew the things I know now before, I wouldn't be in the music industry. If Prince were an emerging artist in 2022, he would likely have thrived in the contemporary music landscape. Today's artists enjoy more autonomy and are not as reliant on major labels to manage their careers. Prince, with his musical ingenuity and entrepreneurial mindset, proved that artists could be both creative powerhouses and astute entrepreneurs, challenging the traditional belief that such decisions should be exclusively dictated by corporate executives. There is a war going on, the battlefields in the mind, and the prize is the soul. When contemplating Prince, our minds conjure the image of a versatile genius, adept at composing, producing, mastering various musical instruments, and possessing dance skills that rivaled even his backing performers. Elevating Prince to the forefront of our consciousness, we unmistakably associate him with sensuality, evident through his overtly provocative style. His music becomes synonymous with intimate, bedroom-friendly melodies, and we perceive the man, in his own renowned words, as an individual of immense allure and magnetism. Uh, mainly I sensed a great deal of uh, negativity and entropy in the music. There's, um, there's a disintegration. However, in the midst of the undeniable S undertones prevalent in Prince's music, and even within his persona, we also discover another facet that has historically clashed with S religion. Indeed, the complex interplay between S and religion has been a source of tension, with the Catholic Church, for instance, long considering the topic a taboo. Yeah, sex sexuality is not bad. No. I'm talking about sexuality is very spiritual in nature, and that's a God-given gift, too. Nonetheless, for an artist exuding undeniable sensuality, Prince maintained an unwavering faith in God. I like to believe my inspiration comes from God. I've always known God is my creator. Without him, nothing works, he once affirmed. Prince's faith may have been deeply rooted in his early life, marked by a miraculous event. He was born epileptic, yet miraculously his condition was cured. As a child, Prince reportedly confided in his mother. My mother told me one day I walked into her and said, uh, Mom, I'm not going to be sick anymore. And she said, why? And I said, because an angel told me so. Suggesting that an angel had foretold his healing, though Prince himself has occasionally expressed uncertainty about recalling this specific conversation with his mother. Prince was initially raised as a Seventh-day Adventist, but later in life he embraced the faith of Jehovah's Witnesses. Both of these religions are sometimes considered to be on the fringes of mainstream Christianity. Nevertheless, Prince's unwavering belief in God remains undeniable, particularly when we delve into the themes present in his music. One particular track on which Prince Prince's faith in Christ is evident is the opener of 1984's Purple Rain, which opens with the sermon-like line, Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life, as well as a funeral procession-esque organ solo to boot. In 1997, Prince disclosed that the track served as a metaphor symbolizing the conflict between Christ and Satan. However, it was presented as a metaphor rather than a direct and overt reference to his faith. This approach was likely due to the reluctance of radio stations to promote songs with explicit religious themes. As I wrote it, Let's Go Crazy was about God and the de-elevation of sin, Prince said. But the problem was that religion as a subject is taboo in pop music. People think that the records they release have got to be hip, but what I need to do is to tell the truth. I had to change those words up, but the elevator was Satan. I had to change the words up because you couldn't say God on the radio. And Let's Go Crazy was God to me. It was, stay happy, stay focused, and you can beat the elevator. Are we going to let the elevator bring us down? Oh no, let's go. 
Prince ingeniously navigated the radio censorship restrictions to convey his pastor-like wisdom on the transformative role God can play in our lives when embraced. Notably, the track re-entered the Billboard Hot 100 charts after Prince's untimely death in 2016, surging as high as number 26 just three weeks following his passing. It's like that. It's kind of like a black hole, and it's hard to audit, it's hard to get accounting, and it's not that it's just about the money. While much of our initial conceptions of Prince seem at odds with religion, what with all the overt we find in his music, it is evident that Prince found solace in God, which in many ways eases the pain of his sad and early exit from this life. In Let's Go Crazy, the Revenant Prince proclaims, I'm here to tell you there's something else, the afterworld, a world of never-ending happiness. You can always see the sun, day or night. Undoubtedly, Prince's influence left a profound impact on many, including Eddie Murphy, who openly acknowledged this connection. In a revealing interview, Eddie Murphy recounted a surreal experience he had once shared with the late music icon Prince at the musician's residence. Two or three in the morning, and uh, we're at his house, and Prince goes, who wants to go roller skating? He was like, what? And he went to, to this roller rink at like three in the morning. Eddie Murphy mentioned that Prince had skates that would light up as he skated, similar to the way some sneakers light up when you walk. And according to him, it was a magical moment. He said, you know how some sneakers, when you walk, they would light up? He had skates that when he skated, they would light up. Fallon responded, that's bizarre. To which Murphy replied, it was surreal. However, there were some people who slammed him for the reference of Satan in his songs. Sinead O'Connor has alleged that Prince was involved in devil business and recounted an incident where she perceived him as being violent during a pillow fight. The 54-year-old singer stated that she was called to the late music icon's residence for a meeting in 1991, shortly after achieving global success with her cover of, of his song, Nothing Compares to You. In her new memoir, Rememberings, she claimed that the irises of Prince's eyes vanished as he stood at the front door of his Hollywood property, leading her to fear that he might be deeply involved in the occult. Yeah, I think I was very young. I wasn't ready for the type of success, inverted commas, that happened. Do you know what I mean? I, I wasn't really setting out to be a pop star. Further discussing the moment in an interview with The Times, she said, That is as true as God. I believe he was involved in devil business because an old girlfriend of his told me he had the power to make S.E. move around the room. He got me up there to see. Could this be be one of mine? I guess he didn't bank on the Irish and me telling him to go of himself. Sinead, who in the 1990s received ordination as a priest from Bishop Michael Cox of the Irish Orthodox Catholic and Apostolic Church and currently practices as a Muslim, has also detailed in her book a distressing encounter with Prince. She asserted that he struck her with an object concealed within a pillowcase during a pillow fight and described instances of him allegedly stalking her with his car and chasing her down the road after escaping from what she described as a macabre mansion. But it's very hopeful, isn't it? He obviously intends to get her back. Yes. <laughs> He's getting yes. her back because she's coming home. The Irish singer has stated that there were multiple factors contributing to Prince's violent behavior during their meeting. Prince, who passed away in 2016 at the age of 57, is no longer able to comment on these allegations. Sinead explained, Firstly, Prince didn't like people covering his songs. Secondly, he had all these female protégés, and he was annoyed that I wasn't one of them. Moreover, Siniad has also characterized Prince as a violent A of women and alleged that he terrorized and physically A her during her visit to his Hollywood mansion in the 1990s. These claims were also featured in her memoir, which was previewed in a New York Times profile, a publication that occurred four years after Prince's unfortunate death from a drug overdose. She writes that Prince summoned her to his macabre Hollywood mansion, chastised her for swearing in interviews, harangued his butler to serve her soup, though she repeatedly refused it, and sweetly suggested a pillow fight, only to thump her with something hard he'd slipped into his pillowcase, the Times reported. When she escaped on foot in the middle of the night, she writes, he stalked her with his car, leapt out and chased her around the highway. In her own words, Sinead wrote, You've got to be crazy to be a musician, but there's a difference between being crazy and being a violent A of women. However, the massive public was always on Prince's side, and they never seemed to be lingered by Sinead's narrative. One of his fans wrote, The industry has been K-off artists for a long time now. MJ, Prince, Whitney, etc. When you no longer want to play by their rules, this is your end or they will destroy you in front of millions. This industry is very evil. 
Another fan wrote, It's heartbreaking to think of such an icon being in a position of helplessness knowing they were coming for him, and everyone around him was wicked. Soon as he got ownership back from his music, they K him. One other fan penned his emotions as, Before he died, I watched him in an interview where he said that G. Washington was not the first U.S. president, that there was eight other presidents before him, and like he said, I don't know about you, but I get a bit pissed off when people lie to me. Yeah, I get pissed too. His untimely demise really left the audience in shock and many questions unanswered. In addition to the official conspiracy theories surrounding Prince's death, such as TMZ's suggestion of a drug overdose and the National Enquirer's mention of AIDS, the internet has given rise to various speculations about the circumstances of the musical genius's passing. Some even pointed out curious connections like The Simpsons supposedly predicting Prince's death. Like Prince playing second fiddle to Michael Jackson, and perhaps that had something to do with the fact that the episode never got made. The 19th episode of The Simpsons' annual Treehouse of Horror series included a segment where Homer Simpson eliminates several celebrities, including Prince, whom he supposedly K using the singer's distinctive shaped guitar. Some individuals have interpreted this as possible evidence that the animated comedy series had foreknowledge of Prince's eventual death, which took place eight years later, and have even suggested the involvement of the Illuminati in these speculations. However, fans also think that he is himself responsible for his own death as one person commented, I grew up a Prince fan. I stopped listening to him years before he died. It was so many things I found out that I would never praise an entertainer again in my life. All of them are paid to entertain and keep you blinded from the truth. Hollywood is evil wood, the devil's playground. He was a big player in his own death. Moreover, there is an interesting story about Prince holding back an album due to a negative ecstasy trip. His Black album was initially set to be released in 1987, but just before its release, he withdrew the album. Insiders claim that Prince believed releasing the album would have an evil influence, and he reportedly expressed that he couldn't subject the world to it. The album was eventually released in 1994. Prince's enigmatic nature and statements have led some people to believe that he may have predicted his own death. His brief and somewhat awkward interaction with social media included his last Instagram post just before his passing. This post featured a picture of him along with the since-deleted message, just when you thought you were safe. Given Prince's tendency for mysterious pronouncements, some more conspiracy-minded individuals on the internet have interpreted this message to suggest that he might have had a premonition or sense that he was in some form of danger. However, such interpretations are speculative and not based on concrete evidence. One of his friends, Maya Washington, said, before you meet him, you have the idea of him being this thing. He's untouchable, he's a unicorn, he's a meta planet. So the first thing I was taken aback by, and a lot of people are taken aback by, is his size. Because I'm short, I'm 5'3", and he's shorter than me. But that aside, he is a unicorn. He's somehow floating when he's talking. Some individuals have suggested that Prince may have predicted his own death during his final public appearance at a party held at Paisley Park, shortly after receiving treatment for an overdose and just days before his passing. According to reports, Prince told those in attendance, wait a few days before you waste any prayers. This statement has led to speculation and interpretations that he might have had a foreboding sense of his impending death. However, it's important to note that such interpretations are based on the circumstances surrounding his final days and remain speculative. He left everything on the stage. He gave us his all. He did around four encore. And he was dead after some time. Music legend Prince died after taking what he thought was Vicodin, but was actually a counterfeit painkiller that was laced with fentanyl. A Minnesota prosecutor said in announcing that he would not be filing criminal charges in Prince's death. In all likelihood, Prince had no idea he was taking a counterfeit pill that could K him, Carver County attorney Mark Metz said at a news conference in Chaska. Others around Prince also likely did not know that the pills were counterfeit containing fentanyl. Despite an intensive investigation, there is no reliable evidence showing how Prince obtained the counterfeit Vicodin laced with fentanyl or who was involved in procuring those pills, Metz said. This has compounded the shock and sorrow of his departure for his fans, still wondering why he died of an opioid overdose and why his multi-million dollar estate is still such a mess. 
Contradictions and seeming inconsistencies are part and parcel of Prince's whole story. Nothing is simple or self-evident, says Alex Hahn, a Boston lawyer, Prince fan, and co-author of The Rise of Prince, 1958 to 1988. With someone like Elvis Presley or Kurt Cobain or Amy Winehouse, there is an unambiguous picture of physical or psychological deterioration as part of substance abuse. Prince died of an overdose, but he doesn't have these other signs in common with them. Moreover, Frank Wheaton, a lawyer who up until last month represented one of Prince's siblings and presumed heirs, one of an army of lawyers involved in the case, says, There's a lot of mystery, a lot of information behind the curtain. It appears increasingly clear that Prince was not overly preoccupied with the workings of the physical world or what would transpire after his transcendence. Perhaps he had a deep-seated confidence that his legacy was firmly established through his life's accomplishments, and he was content to leave the unfolding of events to fate as he embarked on his journey to the great beyond. That's it for today, folks. Until next time, goodbye.